Hello, and welcome to a demonstration of the SolidFire.NET SDK. My name is Adam Haid, and I'm on the host integrations team at NetApp SolidFire. I'm going to do this demonstration with Visual Studio. We're going to use a console application, and we're going to get started with the .NET SDK. So let me start this creating. I'll switch back to my browser for a bit, and I'm going to head to our GitHub account. That's slash SolidFire, and what I'm looking for is the uh, sdk-.net repo. Once I get there, I scroll down and I can see a readme. Oh, a little too fast there. Uh, and there's an installation section right near the top with the command I need to install the SolidFire SDK from nougat.org. All right, switch back to Visual Studio and open the package manager. And we'll get that installed. Make sure we switch to nougat.org, install package, solidfire.sdk. Okay, good. That's done. Let's switch over to our references to make sure that everything came in that we need. There's the SDK, and there's its dependency, newtonsoft.json. So I'm going to paste in a whole bunch of code here. We're going to go through it line by line, taking a look at how to use the SDK. Let me open this uh, up a little bit more so we can see better. What we're going to do is list all accounts, list all volumes for an account, create snapshot of a volume, and then schedule a recurring snapshot. So the first thing that we have to do inside our program is get an, a, solidifier, a solidifier element object. So we have a factory method called element, in elementfactory.create that will uh, retrieve and create a solidifier element object for us. So there's a few optional parameters here. The mandatory ones are target, username, and password. And in this case, the target is an IP address, and then I also have my username and password here. I'm going to assign the resulting solidfire, dot, or solidfire element object into an SF variable. And that's going to create the connection to an SF cluster, as well as give me access to everything that I want uh, using the API. So, Using IntelliSense, I can take a look and see what methods are available in the SolidFire element object. Um, starting off, I have the add account, add cluster, uh, delete things, uh, enable things, moving a little fast here, so uh, slow down, git cluster config. Uh, there is quite a bit of um, methods and functionality that you can call using the SDK. So. The first thing I'm going to do is list all accounts. So this is going to display existing accounts. And in order to do that, I need to call sf.listaccounts. Now, almost every method has the ability to hand some parameters into it that would help uh, filter it down. In this case, we're creating a list accounts request object. So I'm going to inspect that object a little bit and see what's available to me. I can set a start account ID and a limit. Well, in my situation, I don't want to limit any accounts. I'd like to display all of them. So I'm not going to set those parameters, but I do need to hand a request object into the method uh, for list accounts. That's going to generate a list accounts result object. Um, all of our methods uh, using the SDK generate result objects. And then inside those result objects, you'll find uh, the values that were returned by the API. So in this instance, list accounts result has accounts an array of account objects. Then we're going to iterate over those accounts and uh, write them to the screen. Before I display all of the existing accounts, I'm going to take a look and see what is on my cluster. What can I expect to come back? So let me log in here and see what I've got. I've previously created a couple of demo volumes and I have a couple of demo accounts. One's called existing and one's called SDK demo. So I anticipate getting two accounts back and one of them will be called SDK demo. The next thing I want to do is display volumes for the SDK demo account. So what, here, what I've done here is uh, created a list volumes request object and I'm going to set the accounts that I want to list the volumes for um, right here inside that request object. Now, what I did is I, I, I'm selecting all of the accounts from the list accounts result object. 
And I think what I'd like to do is limit that a little further to only the SDK demo account. So I'll do a where, and you will do, use link to limit to only the ones where username is SDK demo. Oh, there we go. So now this will list the volumes for that one account that I will send this request object into the list volumes command and that will return a list volumes result object that I'll set into the demo volumes result variable. Then I'll iterate over the volumes inside that and write them to the screen. Next, I wanna create a snapshot of a volume. Okay, so I need to create, again, a request object and set, uh, let's see, I'll set the volume ID from my demo volumes result object from above uh, we're only going to snap the first one, so I'll just grab the first volume off of there, grab the volume ID, and set that into the request objects property for volume ID, and then I'll hand it a name also. I'll give that result object to the create snapshot method, and that will return a create snapshot result, which I'll set into the create snapshot result variable. Then I will call to list all snapshots that are for that volume ID. Then I'll iterate over them, which really it should only be one and I'll write them to the screen. The next thing I'll do is schedule a recurring snapshot. So this is creating a schedule. I'll create a schedule object. I'll set a name, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 0, 100 hours. The frequency is a days of week frequency, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I've specified that here in the weekdays property, and the hours is one or 0, 100. I'll also create a schedule info object to set into the schedule object, and I'll set the volume IDs to all of the volumes that came back from demo volumes result. So this schedule will snap all of the volumes from my SDK demo account uh, on, the, on the frequency specified here, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 0, 0100. I'll give that request, oh, so here's something interesting. I'm handing a schedule object to the create schedule method as opposed to a create schedule request. Now previously I've said you have to have a request object to uh, hand to a method you don't always have to have a request object. These methods are overloaded with the parameters that would, that would be properties of the request object. So in this case, the create schedule, so if I were to create a new create schedule request object and set properties to it, oh, need the word new, there we go. Now, if I were to set properties, there's only one property. It's called schedule. So in this demonstration or in this example right here, what I've done is just foregone the uh, creation of a schedule of a request object and just handed that one property in. So let me scroll up and give a, a couple more examples. Here, this create snapshot took a create snapshot request. It is overloaded and can also have um, the required or optional uh, parameters that also make up that request. So you can choose how you want to implement it. I suggest using request objects because then if something changes in future versions, you don't have to go back and change the signature uh, of all the calls that you make. I like to suggest using request objects whenever possible. As a demonstration though, I am in this case only going to hand the property into the create schedule method and that will garner me a create schedule result. I will uh, just turn that thing into a string and write it to the screen. And then I will call list schedules. And in this case, there are no parameters. I can't hand anything in to, to filter the um, schedules on the cluster. I always just get all of them. So in one line, I've called list schedules with, with no filter because there are none and pulled off the dot schedules property, which is an array of schedules. Um, from a list schedules result object and set that into a schedules variable. So this actually looks a little cleaner. Not quite as much room for um, error handling, uh, but you can see in one line, you can take care of uh, querying and pulling uh, objects and setting them into a variable. So I'll loop over all of those schedules and write them to the screen. Let's run this and see what happens. And there we go. So we first displayed existing accounts. There is existing account and SDK demo. We displayed a volume, volumes actually, for the SDK demo. Uh, there is volume 1935 and volume 1936. These are SDK demo and SDK demo clone from um, 
other demonstrations, I created those volumes. Then I created a snapshot. This is called SDK Demo Snapshot, and it's on volume 1935, which is the first one that came back in the uh, list volumes call above. And then I scheduled a recurring snapshot. And what returned when I did that was uh, schedule ID 777. Um, and then I ran that and pulled all of them. And the result was uh, the schedule here, the name Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 0100. That's the only schedule that's on the cluster. So let's switch back to my cluster and take a look at what happened. What we did is created a snapshot. So here is that SDK demo snapshot on the SDK demo volume. And we also created a schedule, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 0, 0100 hours, and it is on volumes 1935 and 1936. So, success. All right, so I've shown you how to um, reference the SDK, how to bring it into your project, um, the steps that are necessary to get the SolidFire element object that you can perform all of the methods off of, uh, giving you a good idea for how to get started. Again, I'm Adam Hay, and I'm with the host integrations team with NetApp SolidFire, and I hope you enjoy using our .NET SDK.